Woo! What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another King James video. Really quick, we just wrapped up a little edit here, but currently right now, Kyle McDougall put together a Black Lives Matter print fundraiser, and all of the proceeds from this print sale here is going to a Black Lives Matter uh, Global Network Foundation. And so 100% of the profits are going to go straight to them uh, to support the entire movement. But and if you check it out, man, there is some incredible photographers on here. I mean, most of the other guys up here, like you got Willem, Verbeek, shout out to the boy Willem. Who else we have? We got Vincent Perry Jr. Yes, sir. Matt Day, of course. Hell yeah. Who else we have? I think Joe Greer's on here. Michael Sturm. Minus that guy. Who the fuck is Jonathan Progress? That dude sucks ass. But here it is, folks. Chris Gardner. Let me go through all these real quick. Of course, the creator of the entire fundraiser, Kyle McDougal. Joe Greer, of course. Yes, sir. What's up, Joe? Can't forget Corey as well. Corey Wolfenberger. There it is, you guys. Check it out, man. 100% of the profits are going to be donated again to the Black Lives Matter Global Network fundraiser. So check it out. It's for a good cause. Get yourself some prints. And uh, just super honored again, Kyle. Thank you again for including me in this print sale. Okay, so my plan for today i'll be honest with you was to have more of a chill and laid back day i just wrapped up a video uh with some prints and whatnot like check that out Woo, crispy but i wanted to kind of kick it back for today and uh just go thrifting you know come back to the roots of maybe finding some cool cameras and whatnot because the other day we went out and we thrifted some paper and that paper turned out to be amazing 11 by 17 paper for five bucks a pack we got three packs so i'm hoping today maybe we could score something else and see what's going on out there so yep that's the plan for today and uh Let's see if we can find anything dope. All right, so here's the deal. There's only about two thrift stores that are open right now. One of them is going to be going north and one of them is going to be going south. Hopefully we can hit both before they close. I know that uh, store hours are, what the fuck? I know that store hours are going to be differing because of the entire pandemic thing, but Let's hope, man, that, uh, you know, it stays open long enough for me to, to catch some deals, man. Let's see if we can find anything today. Hey, one person. Thank you. Alright, guys, we made it into the store. They're only letting, like, a couple of people in at a time. I think it's, like, a maximum 80 people. Uh, but I haven't actually been here in a long time, so I'm not even sure what to look for or expect right now. Hopefully it's popping, so slide projector right here. Kind of in beat up condition, but 20 bucks. Not a bad play. What else? Oh, Alright, so far it's been pretty slim pickings. All we really found was that little case, which I'm probably just gonna drop. We also found this interesting little Bell and Howell 29mm macro point and shoot. Now what's interesting to me first and foremost, Bell and Howell, not too familiar with that brand, but uh, the shape of the camera is what interests me, as well as the 29mm focal length. So. We'll see how that goes. We'll hold on to it right now. Thank you for shopping with us. All right, I changed my mind about this camera. So this little $4.98 camera uh, looks pretty good just off of first impressions. And so what I wanna do is do a ridiculous comparison. A comparison that cost about $2,500 more than this camera right here.
yes, you guys are correct, man. Today we are comparing that $4 thrift store camera compared to my $2,500 Leica M2. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why the hell, Jonathan, would you ever even compare that? You guys know already that the Leica is just going to blow the pointy shoot out of the water. Yeah, that might be the case, but at the same time, this little camera right here can make some good images, and I'm sure of it. But I want you guys to be the judge of this. I want you guys to see exactly the difference. I want you to tell me, you know, what you guys think in the comments down below as I show you guys the results. And what I'm going to do is just take photographs of the same exact things and then put them up on the screen to compare them. I'm actually really excited about this because the Bell & Howell camera for some reason looks really, really surprisingly good. Like, uh, it even has like a nice little pop-out lens. So here's the on-off switch. Pop that out right there. Um, the shape is really what gets me. That boxy shape right here just looks really, really, really appealing. And so uh, hopefully it performs as good as it looks and we're gonna test that out so i'm gonna head out we're gonna drive out a little bit maybe just head to like a local state park or whatnot take pictures out there quick disclaimer this challenge is completely completely just for fun again we're not here trying to make world-class images we're just here to compare and see what would happen between a twenty five hundred dollar camera and a four dollar camera and see the differences between the two So we got some shots in so far with the point and shoot and the Leica. So far, what do you guys think? So we're gonna make this quick. Um, I found as I was driving this super cool heating and air conditioning shop, I guess you would call it, with a bunch of cool artwork uh, kind of sitting around there. So I'm gonna take both of these and I'm just gonna take some pictures real quick. I'm gonna leave you guys right here for a second.
So what do you guys think, man? What do you think? The little $4 thrift store camera versus the $2,500 Leica. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. But I want to share my thoughts really quick to end this video off about what I think about the entire kind of comparison as well as maybe where the point and shoot may have a slight advantage. All right, so first and foremost, man, the image quality coming from both, we knew that the Leica was gonna be better. And overall, I do feel like the Leica did create not only sharper images, but more appealing looking images for the simple fact that the optics were much better with a 35 millimeter Summicron, like for God's sakes. And uh, on this little point and shoot, man, we had like a little plastic looking lens. I'm not 100% sure if this is plastic, but from what it looks like, just, you know, straight on, it looks like a little plastic lens. And you also seen on a lot of the photographs, point and shoot was a lot, lot wider. So this is a 29 millimeter focal length, which is very similar to 28. And then you have the 35 millimeter on the, uh, on the Leica there. So that's one of the, you know, one of the differences that you can just see right away, straight off the bat. As well as the point and shoot having some weird issues with, I don't know if it was a light leak or if it was just flaring, but there was some incredible, you know, flaring on the left side of each of the frames from this point and shoot that kind of ruined things. But overall, being that this was $4 and it's from a company called Bell & Howell, which to my knowledge didn't make the best point and shoot cameras. I think they made like cheaper plastic cameras that you can buy from like drugstores and whatnot. Uh, this camera did pretty well, in my opinion. It gave the film look, and there's a freaking data back on here. It has a nice little, you know, pop-up thing. And overall, the shape, I feel like, is really appealing. But other than that, and other than it having an actual flash, the only real upsides to this particular Bell & Howell camera is uh, that it's small, that it can get you somewhat decent image quality if you just want to get shooting film. I do think that this could be a better option than just buying a disposable because you can, you know, obviously load more rolls of film into it instead of just a single use. But would I recommend this camera to anybody who wants a point and shoot film camera? Hell no, probably not. That's just because there are tons of other point and shoot cameras from like Pentax, Canon, uh, Nikon, what else? We got Olympus, of course. All of those companies created very, very good point and shoot cameras. A lot of them zoom cameras. And you can still find those for an incredible deal online. You know, you might spend about 20 bucks. It's not going to be $4. But if you can snag something like the Olympus Stylus zoom cameras, those are great cameras. It's going to get you a lot better image quality than you will from these. Um, if you want to spend more, you can get something like the Olympus Stylus Epic or for example, like the uh, Pentax IQ Zoom series cameras. But what really surprised me about this entire thing was that regardless of what camera you're using, you're still creating some type of image. And even with this little point and shoot camera, if I were to go out and shoot street photography or you know, better yet, somebody else were to go out to shoot street photography with this camera, they can get usable results. You know, it's absolutely capable of making good images. And uh, I want to leave it on that note as well. And now that you guys have seen the results from both cameras, I want you guys to ask yourself this question really quick. Was the huge price difference worth it in terms of image quality and overall ability to make images? And the reason why I ask you guys this is because that 20 something hundred dollars that you would have spent on a Leica instead of just, you know, buying the cheap 35 millimeter camera, or whatever camera you already own, that money could be put to better use. And if you already have a camera that can make good images that are capable and you're not always buying the newest and greatest thing, you can use the money that you were to spend on something like that and invest that money into other areas that can make you better photographs. For example, traveling to different countries or, you know, buying gas to be able to drive out to a farther destination, things like that. Because honestly, I feel like 99% of what photography is nowadays, especially online, all kind of surrounds the gear aspect of photography. Be sure to ask yourself that question the next time you think about buying a piece of gear because as long as you have a camera that works for you, I honestly feel like that is more 
than enough. All right, gang, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for staying till the very end, man. I will reward you guys, man, no doubt about it. Click the link in the description below for something extra. Once again, once we hit 100K, we are gonna be doing something huge on this channel, and I won't say too much about it yet. So if you guys wanna stay updated, be sure to turn on those post notification bells so that you guys can be alerted when I upload new videos, as well as subscribe if you are brand new to this channel. Uh, it's late at night now, and uh, I'm getting tired, so I'm going to end it off here, man. Thank you again for tuning in. As always, Minolta Gang. Whew.